This week, I have cleared two things off my to-do list that have been there since I was a teenager. One, I found a way to quickly give me some lasting relief from the occasional lower back pain that I get. And two, I got to do what Michael Keaton's Batman did at night when not fighting crime. No, not that, but I have hung upside down a lot. I have been trying an inversion table every day for a week now, and I've gone from thinking they might be a bit daft and terrified I'd fall off and land on my head, to now wanting to get one on my own and comfortable enough using it that I can hop on and immediately go fully inverted. So you're the one. The science, the pros, the cons, and what I think I've got from it coming up. First of all, back to day one. It is day one with my inversion table. I'm gonna tell you all about it, uh, why I've got it for the week, all that stuff coming up. First of all, I just wanna get comfortable using it because having put my kids on it earlier to make sure it was safe and then seeing them scream like babies, I have a feeling it might be something that takes a little bit more getting used to than I thought. So this is the Tita LX9. It's supposed to be incredibly simple to use. You just set your height, so six foot six for me. You set the angle you wanna go back by using the strap. I'm not using that because I watched a couple of YouTube tutorials and to go right upside down, you don't need that on. Uh, and then you lock your feet in. I had a go for about five seconds and realized it was disconcerting enough that it'd be worth setting up the camera so you could see my early attempts because they may be amusing. Uh, if you're thinking I was a bit mean to put my kids on it, if not dangerous, they built it. So if it had fallen apart, it would have been their fault. Uh, because they built it, I can't tell you from my own experience how complicated it was to put together when it came out of the box. But trust me, they did it in half an hour it can't have been difficult. Right, so I'm gonna lock my feet in. So I'm in. The idea now is that if I set the height correctly, my body's halfway point should be at the pivot point, meaning I just need to raise my arms above my head, which I'm a bit apprehensive about doing, and I'll go backwards, bring my arms forward, and I'll come forwards. In theory, there's a viral video going around at the moment of a lady who literally had to call the police because she got stuck upside down on one of these things. After hanging upside down for six minutes, Christine calls 911 on her smartwatch. Uh, that would be rather embarrassing. There's no one in the house right now to help me, um, but that also means there's no one to laugh at me. So swings and roundabouts. I've got my Apple watch on, so calling the police is an option available and I watched Cliffhanger last night, I think I'm gonna be okay. Keep looking at me! Okay. <laughs> okay, grow up. Whoa. Okay, nothing's happening yet. Whoa. Okay. Okay, it is sensitive. Oh. Do you know what this feels like? This feels like when you learn to wheelie a motorbike and in your head you're like street hawk and people watching, you're an inch off the ground. Because I feel like I'm upside down, but I have a suspicion I might not be yet. Okay, focus. Oh my God, I must be upside down. Oh my God, I'm nowhere near upside down. Okay. Okay. Where's the floor? Where is the floor? Why can't I feel? Why am I not going any further? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I'm upside down. You're not gonna die. It took me about 25 minutes of playing around to get to where I was comfortable going upside down and bring myself back up again. If you're having a go on one of these, my advice would be to have someone there that could assist you or use the safety strap thing to get used to going back a little way before going completely upside down. If you do that, you'll probably get the hang of it an awful lot quicker and feel safer. So day one, and I was comfortable flipping upside down, but it didn't feel very good for my head. At which point you might be thinking, isn't this supposed to help your back? What's it even got to do with your head? So I do have, or did have, a bad back. More on that in a bit. The problem with my head is that it felt like all the blood was rushing to it and my eyes might pop out. Not 
literally, although I did Google it, and there are some studies that clearly show these tables are not necessarily a good idea if you have eye problems. Going upside down increases uh, retinal, arterial pressure, and other things that I don't understand, but sound pretty serious. Anyway, my eyes stayed in place, but it wasn't pleasant. I did try to convince myself I probably looked like Maverick pulling some Gs. <laughs> but then concluded I really just looked like an old bloke hanging upside down in his garage with his head swelling up. So I called it quits and went back to it the next day. Just did a few minutes, but a few minutes every few hours. So I probably used it five or six times on day two and day three. And by then, I don't know if I'd got used to it or if my body had just become better at tolerating being upside down, but I could go fully inverted and just hang there. I mean, I was reading emails and stuff upside down. So if you ever go on one, don't judge the long-term experience based on using it that first time. You do, in my experience, very quickly adapt to it, even if it does feel a bit odd at the start. So having established that my head was not gonna explode and my eyes would remain in my skull, I thought I should explain how everything works. So this is halfway through the week. Right, this is my third or fourth, fourth day on this thing. I have completely nailed it. As long as you set the height correctly in the first place, you can control the angle you go back with your arms completely. On day one, it felt very weird. It was like those team building exercises at work where you sort of fall backwards into the arms of your colleagues, but without the little cucumber sandwiches you then get for lunch. Actually, the best way to describe it, it's like those flotation tanks where you're just lying in salt water in the, in the dark, just pretending to be Joe Rogan, floating on this thing, without having to go anywhere near upside down, just so you're weightless, with a complete control over it with your arms, just feels very, very relaxing. It's actually quite fun. Uh, obviously, to get the benefits, you need to start actually inverting. The theory is then that the compression of the spine that's occurred during the day as a result of gravity becomes reversed. All the good things flow from there. Now, a lot of the online information says you don't need to go completely upside down to start getting those benefits. To get all the benefits, you never have to go past 60 degrees. This is kind of the magic angle where you get the pressure in the spine to at or near zero. But I found that it's not really until you get almost fully upside down that you can really feel them in the moment starting to happen. There's a point where you're not quite upside down, but near enough that your body weight just shifts towards the floor and suddenly it just feels very therapeutic, like a, a great stretch that you couldn't really replicate in any other way, I don't think. Okay, so upside down, um, fully upside down. I mean, I can feel a huge stretch there. But what's interesting is that when you get to this point, although you're upside down, you're still on the table. My back is still against the table here. What you can do from this point, which uh, I wasn't very comfortable doing at first, but now feels great, is you can basically push the backboard a bit further away from you and it sort of locks out behind you. So now the backboard isn't on my back. I'm completely kind of free hanging here. Um, my, obviously my feet are attached, um, but that's it. Nothing else is touching anything. And from this point here, the stretch is incredible. You have to really focus on relaxing because your, your sort of your natural reaction is to is to tense up because hanging upside down is a bit unnatural, I guess. But once you do, yeah, once you do sort of have confidence that you're not going anywhere, um, you, you almost feel like you're getting taller. I feel like my head is getting lower to the ground. Um, feels brilliant. Uh, I've seen online a few people doing various sort of stretches and there are things you can do in this position that, that kind of add to the, um, the benefits, I guess. I haven't gone down that road yet. I just... Uh, I just sort of hang here uh, and relax and um, update Instagram, or whatever. Uh, there might be more productive things I can do than that. I will look into it. But just hanging feels very good. I mean, this is great. This is full. This is full Batman here. Um, and to get back up is incredibly simple as well. You just get hold of the board behind you and sort of pull yourself back onto it, and then just find that balance point again. So now from here, bringing my hands, dodging the camera, bring my hands forward, will take me back up again. The only thing that's worth pointing out, I did notice um, that when you're on the table and you're upside down like this, your weight shifts down the table a little bit. Not a huge amount, but you know, I'm, I'm further slid down the table. You know, my, my feet are at full stretch and everything. The point is, more of my body weight is this way than that way. So when you go back up, it takes a bit more... Um, of your body weight, you know, your arms, to, to, to counter you out. I will not explain that very. Let me go back up and explain what I mean. 
Okay, so basically you need to put more weight over the front of your body to bring yourself back up if you slid a couple of centimeters down the table, uh, which you, you do inevitably, um, just locking your feet in. You know, the minute you put some weight going backwards, your feet slide in the restraints by a couple of centimeters, and that's enough to shift your balance point. It probably doesn't make much difference for most people. I guess the best way to describe it is if you are somebody who has a body type that when it's inverted, large chunks of it um, don't stay where they would do if you were upright, then you might want to have somebody on hand just to be safe, uh, or at least uh, stash some donuts down there so you can eat until you're rescued. Cops finally arrived to free Christine. Okay, why am I using it? And can you not get the same benefits just hanging off of a chin-up bar? So, since I was a teenager, I have suffered with periods of lower back pain lasting a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks each time, and it would affect me a few times a year. Sometimes it would follow something you'd expect, like lifting too much weight with poor form. Sometimes it would be just something stupidly mundane, like bending down too fast to pick something up off the floor. And it'd be really bad for four or five days, and then very, very slowly get better. Physio, massage, typical anterior pelvic tilt solutions like hip flexor stretches, they all help. And once I'm back to normal, I feel great again. It just takes a while. It happened the second time this year in the summer, lifting too heavy, and it impacted me for a few weeks. I couldn't train properly, I couldn't run really, and I was moaning to Jenna about having a bad back. Facebook heard me, I assume, because it started showing me adverts for inversion tables. Some of them are surprisingly cheap, 120, 130 pound. So I think I might get one. If it's junk, so be it. And then I forgot all about it. 10 days ago, I messed up my back again, doing deadlifts. My grip actually went halfway through a rep because I'd recently been bitten by one of my dogs on my hand, don't ask. Uh, the grip went, I had to drop it quick. Sewing went tweak. Coincidentally, that day, I'm talking to Gym Fit UK, who I've bought loads of gear from. They were sorting me out with a weighted vest that I'm using to run a charity event in January. Uh, just give me a link in the description. I mentioned to them, I'm going to try one of these table things. And they said, hang on, you're six foot six, you're 220 pounds, and you're going to hang upside down on a hundred quid gadget you've seen on a Facebook advert. <laughs> Don't do that. We'll send you one that we sell from Tita. They're like the industry leaders, and you can have a play on it for a week. Hence, the Tita LX9 turns up. And to be fair, it's a good one. It feels rock solid with me on it. It doesn't creak, it doesn't groan. It's a nice bit of kit. Would a cheap one have been just as good? I don't know, I don't care now, having spent time upside down, I know that doing so without having to worry about something going snap and then me going snap is a more pleasant way to do it. Did it fix my back? My back is better. Because of the table? I don't know. The day before I started using it was a Christmas party. I was still nursing the bad back. It was a struggle to get in and out of the car. Today, I feel great. In fact, by day four of using the table, I felt pretty good. I was back out running in the weighted vest, uh, lifting weights in the gym. I've been pushing hard on the rowing machine. All things I wouldn't normally expect to be able to do so soon after suffering with my back going funny. Even if I'd gone and got a massage, manipulation, whatever therapy, which I haven't done this time. Maybe it's just coincidental. There are certainly plenty of people that would tell you the benefits of going upside down, even if it does feel good at the time, are not long-term. As soon as you go upright again, everything just compresses back down, you're right back to square one. But there are obviously others that say different, and there are studies that do seem to indicate positive results for some. Maybe I'm just lucky. For me, that's enough. I'm gonna stick one in my new cycling pain cave that I'm gonna build in the second floor bedroom that's currently being used by one of my kids who is moving out in the new year. And this is the only issue with this thing, it's a bit of a lump. I am very lucky in that I'm gonna have that room with not much in it other than a bike and a TV, so it'll fit in there fine. But even folded up, it takes up a chunk of space. Oh, and can you not just do the same thing by hanging off of a chin-up bar? No, I thought the sensation would be identical, and I've done loads of dead hang stuff on chin bars, practicing for things like obstacle course races, where you need to just better hold on to something for a while but it's not the same sensation at all. For a start, no one is hanging for very long. Even if you use wrist straps, I even have wrist hooks to give you a better grip. The discomfort on your hands and your forearms just becomes significant before any discomfort sets in on an inversion table. And because you're having to grip, you never get the sensation of being completely relaxed into the stretch. I did wonder what the ankle boots might be like that you can hook on upside down, but my obvious concern with that is that if anything did go wrong and you wanted to recover quickly, there might be more to it than just sort of moving your arms forward.
If you have no space for anything else, I would guess they would be a much more comparable option to the inversion table than just doing dead hangs off a chin bar. Just make sure someone is around to laugh at you and take a photograph if nothing else. That's it, I hung upside down for a week, my bad back went away, I feel good. My expectation is that using that for a few minutes a couple of times a day, in combination with things like standing up for the majority of the time when I'm here doing work at my standing desk, and still seeing my regular sports therapist who makes sure that things aren't out of line and too tight and so on every few months, will, touch wood, reduce the likelihood of problems in the future. Do I recommend it? No, I don't really make recommendations here. I tell you what I'm doing and if I like what that is. I have no idea if it would be suitable for anybody else. I do know that there are a list of contraindications to using these things. So if you have eye problems, high blood pressure, I mean, look up the rest yourself, you might wanna think twice about it or at least have your doctor think once on your behalf. But if you conclude that you do want one, I will stick a link to it in the gear section that I use on my website because I like it enough to do that. Okay, give the video a like and subscribe if you've not already done so. And if you are thinking the table looks a bit weird, you'd like one, but what on earth would visitors to your house think if they saw it? We had it in the living room at the weekend. I needed space in the garage. Jen's family were over and they started asking loads of questions. I said, we'd seen it on Fifty Shades of Grey and never use it without a safe word. They didn't ask any more questions. 